What we're going to be reviewing this morning is lighteners and toners. So far we have been dealing with the addition of color. Now we're going to deal with the removal of color and the different products we're going to use. Our next unit, I think, is uh, products and formulations. So I'm going to go through some of that as we go through our lecture today so you'll understand what's what. Lighteners themselves are the chemical compounds that lighten hair by dispersing, dissolving, and decolorizing the natural hair pigment. Y'all remember our little pictures of the fine hair and the pigment molecules? We said like 20 and then the medium hair with it. What we're going to do is go in and attack those melanin molecules and disperse them. We're not really getting rid of them. We're just breaking them down so they're so much smaller that you can't see them. So remember that when it talks about actually removing, we're not going to remove. As soon as hydrogen peroxide is mixed into the lightener formula, it begins to release oxygen. This process known as oxidation occurs within the cortex of the hair shaft. And hydrogen peroxide is your lightening agent. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. All right. Hair lighteners are used to create a blonde shade that is not achievable with permanent hair color. All right. How many levels can we lift with permanent hair color? Four. 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 So if we've got a client that's got a four level and wants to go to a nine, then we've got to use a lightening agent. Um, hair lighteners will also lighten the hair prior to application of a color to create the final color. That's where toners come in. Toners are aniline derivative tints or permanent hair colors, but they only come in pale, delicate shades. And I brought some out, a color swatch, to show you what we're talking about with pale, delicate shades. And that would be on this side of our color swatches, always pale, delicate shades. So that means your blondes or your platinums or whatever. That's toners. We also now, and this was never done when I was training, we also now have the reds that we have to lighten the hair for before we deposit the reds. You see these bright reds? Some of them look kind of orangey to me. They're kind of copper according to which shade you're looking at. This one's copper, this one's copper red, and that's red. So if we've got real dark hair, we're going to have to remove some of that darkness before we get this brightness. So the others was toning with pale delicate colors, and this is applying a tint rather than a toner after we've lightened. We may also use hair lighteners to lighten hair to a particular shade. Certain individuals when we lighten their hair, that product will pull it on up to the shade or tone they like. And this is why I brought several different types of lighteners out that we're going to discuss and look at in a few minutes to help achieve that because normal healthy hair will only go through two chemical processes. And that's what we're going to have to remember about the question y'all were asking me before the lecture. If we've got a relaxer on there and we've got to use a lightener, that is your two chemical processes, but we are discussing normal healthy hair and two chemical processes. So if we've got kind of resistant hair, then you can probably get by with going ahead and putting the third chemical on there. But if you see the, a little bit of damage after that first one, then you're going to be in trouble if you head for number three. Hair lighteners may be used to brighten or lighten an existing shade. They may be used to lighten only certain parts of the hair like we do in highlighting or, or foiling. And they may be used to lighten dark natural or color treated levels. I do not like to use them for the removal of artificial colors because it's not usually successful. It usually leaves us at an ugly green or an ugly orange and will not take us any further. So it's best to use a color remover product. The decolorizing process. The hair goes through different stages of color as it lightens. Do y'all remember the underlying pigment? Okay, that's what we're going to be looking at. That's the first thing we're going to look at. The amount of change depends on how much pigment the hair has, the strength of that lightening product, and the length of time that it is processed. 
During the process of decolorizing, natural hair can go through as many as 10 stages. And I want you all to look at the 10 degrees of decolorization. But the reason all hair cannot go through those 10 degrees of decolorization is because all of them don't start with one. We've got to decide where we're starting on this level to know how many we go through. If we're starting up here at five, <clears throat> then there's no way to go through 10 levels because there's not 10 left. You see what we're talking about? But dark black hair, true black, can go through all 10 if we're going to take it from one through 10, take it to pale yellow. That's usually not a wise thing to do. You need to be really careful if you're going to go through more than four or five levels because you've got to get a really strong chemical to do so. Decolorizing the hair's natural melanin pigment allows the colorist to create the exact degree of contributing pigment needed for the final result. Do you all understand what that means? Decolorizing the hair's natural melanin pigment allows the colorist to create the exact degree of contributing pigment needed for the final result. Does that sound a little confusing? All right. If we want a really light, light blonde, and we've got, say, medium brown hair, we've got to pre-lighten it to pale yellow in order to achieve this. We lighten it to pale yellow and then apply a toner on it to achieve this pale blonde. But if we only wanted to go to this light blonde with that same medium brown hair, we would not have to go all the way up to the pale yellow stage. We could stop like at the gold stage at level 7 instead of going to level 10. Uh, level 10. So what that means is different colors require different contributing factors being left in the hair or, or contributing um, pigment, excuse me. All right, let's assume we were going to use red. Let's assume we're going to use this copper red. What, would, what level could we highlight to from the medium brown hair? We can probably stop at number five, orange, if that's the that goes. So that's what it means to stop at the amount of contributing pigment. We could take it on to pale yellow and it would work too, but why would we want to go that far yeah. when we don't have to? So we would, okay, when we're in our highlighting, instead of putting that chemical on there for 20 minutes, like it would say, if we say we wanted to highlight mine like I usually do and I'd go all the way up to the blonde, um, I would not leave it on there long, as long. You're going to check it. And I think as we read the directions on these, I think you're going to find that they'll say something like after 35 minutes, if you've not reached the level you want to, reapply the product. Mm -hmm. okay. So time limit's not a big, big thing on this as it is with permanent waving. Okay. Because as it gives up its oxygen, remember this is oxidation from the get-go when we mix yeah. it with hydrogen peroxide. Um, that hydrogen peroxide is going to give up its oxygen relatively quickly. And if we've not reached the amount of contributing pigment we want or got as light as we want to, then we're probably going to need to reapply so we've got fresh oxidation occurring on there. Okay. But this is what it's talking about with stopping it at the correct amount of contributing pigment. So we just stop. We go ahead and... Remove it if it's reached that, yes. Naturally... The lower number you're wanting to achieve, like if you're wanting to achieve, you're going to get to five quicker than you are to ten, yeah. unless you're starting out with mighty light hair. Yeah. The natural, re excuse me, the natural pigment that remains in the hair contributes to the artificial color that's added. So see, that's why we wouldn't want to leave it at orange when we're wanting this real pale blonde. Yeah. Lightening the hair to the correct stage is essential to a beautiful control final hair coloring result. Let me explain another thing to you about taking it to pale yellow while we're here. When we add artificial color to the hair, whether it's the bright red, the blonde toner, or, or black as in hair coloring, if we do not leave enough of the natural 
melanin in there, the granules. The artificial color has nothing to attach to, and that's what makes it fade so much more quickly. So you never want to lighten past the pale yellow because to take it past the pale yellow, those um, little granules are dispersed so much that the artificial pigments have nothing to attach to. The so they're not going to hold. That they don't have anything to grab kind of They don't have anything to grab. That's exactly right. And if there's nothing for us to hold on to yeah. or for them to hold on to, then, you know, you may see a little difference today and the first time you shampoo it, it's out the door, down the drain, because there was nothing in there to hold it. Toners are semi-permanent, demi-permanent, and permanent hair color products that are used primarily on pre-lightened hair to achieve pale and delicate colors. They are applied to the lightest degree of contributing pigment that remains there after the decolorizing process. And the reason that's an important statement, because if you're wanting to go to a iridescent blonde or white blonde and you've stopped at six which would be orange gold or seven which is gold you're not going to get there because that toner does not have the chemical capabilities of taking that hair where it wants to go so it's vitally important that you know where you're going before you start on your trip you know and don't just decide we'll lighten now and then decide what we want it don't work that way we got to know exactly what's going on not all hair will go through all 10 degrees of decolorization. Each natural hair color starts the decolorization process at a different stage. Remember, the goal is to create the correct degree of contributing pigment as the foundation for the final hair color result. And this goes back to our rule that it's not as simple as going back there and choosing a color and making a formula for it. We've got to consider the hair color that we're applying it to as part of our formula. The hair is never safely lifted past the pale yellow stage to white with a lightener. The extreme diffusion of color necessary to give hair a white appearance causes excessive damage to the hair strand. The result is that wet hair feels mushy and will stretch without returning to its original length. Do y'all remember when we were studying about elasticity and I told you that one sure way to tell when the elasticity was gone from the hair is when you wet it. If it feels like wet cotton instead of strands of hair, then all elasticity is gone and it's just a matter of time before you put that hair in the trash can because it's coming off. There's no stretch left there. And that's what they're talking about with it mushy is that cottony. We always called it cotton and the result is that wet hair feels mushy and will stretch without returning to its original length. When dry, the hair is harsh and brittle. Such hair often suffers breakage and will not accept a toner properly. This is when it stains it or turns it the lavender or the gunmetal gray or some other desirable because it just grabs the base color in the toner or the base color stains it because it is like cotton instead of hair. This does not mean that only those born with blonde hair can be white blondes. The baby blonde look can be achieved by lightening to pale yellow and then neutralizing the, under, the unwanted undertone or contributing pigment with a toner. And that means when we get to pale yellow, we know we've got to cut the yellow. So what's directly across from the yellow on the color wheel? Or across from the gold? The purple. So we're going to use a toner that has a base color of violet. All right, let's talk about our hair lightening products. And I've set out a lot of them here. This is V-Light, and all it's going to do is remove color. That's well and good. This is a very strong product, and it's a little scary to me because it works so quickly. So if you're applying it all over somebody's head, you better make sure you move quickly. If you're putting it in foils, you better make sure you move quickly, or you're going to have bright white here and orange over here somewhere because of having to get it off. So that's V-Light. Then we have another one by Matrix. It's called La Bleach. And all of these I'm going through so far do nothing but remove pigment. BW2, and we, we started out, or I started out, lightening hair with basic white, and that's what the BW stands for. The two lets me know it's one of the newer formulas. And all of them are white. You can tell you do not want to breathe deeply of these because they will take your breath and burn your mucous membranes as they go in. Sun glitz is not, and I 
specifically did not get those out because they are claimed to use sun energy instead of um, hydrogen peroxide, but then when you get their activator lotion, it says on the back of the bottle it's hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide. But as you can see, the powder is white. The biggest mistakes made with these is we do not shake this, and some of the active ingredients have got to the bottom of it. If we do not shake it, we put put this bleach on somebody's hair and they sit there and sit there and sit there and they're getting a lot of damage but they're not getting a lot lighter because it has settled during shipping and then we have one by um, Lady Renee sp speed powder bleach and that's what we used to always call it quick lighteners or speed bleaches because they work very fast and knowing that they work very fast then we know they're a strong chemical in the past, they were only used with 20 volume peroxide, but some of them do now come with where they can be used with 30 or 40 volume. Most of them are going to tell you if you mix it with 40 volume peroxide to make sure it does not come in contact with the scap, so it's got to be an off the scap application. But powdered bleaches as a rule are off the scap application. A couple of the companies are coming out with some that they say can be used on the scap, but I am still very leery of that and I would put down a protectant on that scalp if I thought that even a little bit of it may come in contact with it. Now, I thought I had a blue one and a purple one, but I've come out with two violet ones. This is a lightener, and it's meant to cut what color? No, it is purple, so it's meant to cut what? Yellow. It's meant to cut the gold or yellow. So we can lighten and get rid of some of the underlying pigment at the same time. I don't think so. Not just the plain V lights, not. So this is a colada color. It is a lightener plus something to help with the tone. So we know that when we start lightening this hair, it's going to turn gold and give give us trouble getting the gold out. So we would choose the lightener with the violet. I also had some back there with um, blue. So what does the blue counteract? Orange, yeah. So if we've got hair that we know we're going to get a lot of um, orange out of as we begin to lift the underlying pigment, then we'll use blue to counteract it. So I, hair, what would you, would you say we do one of those with a blue? Or are we just, or are we just purple? On um, her, her red, red hair? hair? Yeah. Um, with that orange, I would use the blue. Yeah. There is also a green. What does it cut? Red. So whatever we think that underlying pigment is going to be, we t can choose something to deal with it. I really like the colada colors, and I like cutting some of that underlying pigment that I know is going to give me some trouble after I get through lightening. You know, and oftentimes if we'll do that, we wind up with an end result we want without applying that second chemical. If we're shooting for the lighter shades, and naturally if we're shooting for red, we're not going to get there. But if we're shooting for if we're what? What would you recommend for any of your colors? Put the light. We get a straight bleach, would it? I would, but another type of bleach we have is called a cream bleach. And I thought that would be in this unit. It didn't, we didn't have some other pages to go over. Okay. Um, we also have, there's powder bleach, and that's, that's the big boy there. Now, that's the strongest of all. We have the cream bleach, which can be used on the scalp for on the scalp application, and probably that's what I would use on hers to lift to the correct level of contributing pigment. Hers, I don't think, is going to pull really, really orange, and the gold is easier to cut than the orange. Orange is usually the worst of the lot to cut. But I think that's what I do. And we also have an oil bleach that has an oil base to it, and it's safe for on the scalp applications and often used for retouches. So I would use that, I think. First thing I would do with hers, since it is so dark black, I think I would test strand a couple of things because it has a relaxer on it. Yeah. And I wouldn't, you know... I'd try a couple of things and see what kind of results that I'd have left.
but we got to remember we're not looking at what she has chosen yet. So we're really not sure what underlying pigment. See, again, that's what we're putting the horse before the cart. If we do that, then we can wind up with some problems because we're lifting what she calls purple and what I call purple are probably two different things. And so I don't see a purple in, in uh, this, so I don't know exactly what she's talking about. Some people are talking about the burgundy with a violent cast to it. But again, you can see the different shades. And most companies will identify. Y'all see this ultralight series up here? They'll identify their pale, delicate colors by a special number or letter or either on your color chart. They will say that's what this is. I had one more book I wanted to show you, and this book has always impressed me. They mailed this to me off of a website, but I, I, I was just infatuated by that flower because the whole their, their presentation was very colorful. And this explains all the different products for Clairol. This is not meant to replace your color swatches by any means, but it gives you some application techniques. It shows us a broad range of colors. And as we go over into it, and I've had students that really wanted this book, and I, believe it or not, have emailed Clairol, and they've sent me several. But it goes into how the colors are made, and there's back to you basic colors. Y'all remember studied it and shows how they interact with each other and how they use them in their color products. So this book is very, very interesting. And again, we're right back to our basics. And that shows, makes it easy to see which color cuts the um, underlying pigment. And each one has its own little lesson here with it. And I like that. And it goes into their shades of color. And what they're used for, it gives you a, a history of them. So it'll explain to you what's best to use as a toner, what's classified as permanent hair color, what's best to use on gray, what products do they recommend for it. And each time we've got a different little picture. And now we get into the purple right down here at the bottom. See, I don't know if that's what she's talking about. The violet colored there. And that's probably just an additive to perk up something to that purple. But I like how they've done all this. It makes you want to look further and read further. And there is more information. There's purple again. Y'all interested in buying somebody's hair purple? You see them on this page? And you see the variations of purple? And then again, they say presentation is everything. And we've got our colors again. Every different kind the company has. And I just love this one. And you'd think they're selling us jewelry, but actually they're trying to sell us hair color. And this is where we go into our basic white, basic white too, or whatever, and the uses of it. And also on there with the different colors, if you'll notice, are their kaleidoscopes with the additives in it to cut the different tones you get. All right? And right on through. I bet as well flip now that I've got it this far. You see some different things they've got here. And again, we've got the colors and what they do. The jazzing. She might try jazzing. It's not that damaging to the hair. And sometime it will give a coating that will appear that purple if she doesn't mind the dark purple. Do you see the shades it's in? Yeah. yeah. It also tells you on most of these if it can be used on pre-lightened hair. There is colors that you cannot put on pre-lightened hair or white hair because certain reds and whites make pinks. Certain purples and whites make lavender and somebody you'd say well somebody that want purple hair certainly wouldn't mind lavender hair but they would if they want purple they don't want lavender so always watch your formulations also and here we come with our toners cream toners and they're meant to be used on pre-lightened hair so the toner I know with mine I think we use the toner but I'm not sure which one when we pull our hair up the back that pulls 
class is taught us. And when we rinsed it, I had orange. And then you put a toner on it? I put a toner. Didn't cut all the orange. But it cut some. But it cut some. It's according to what base color is in your toner as to how much it will cut so and I what know. level you stopped at. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is the back was stopped before it was really to the underlying pigment yeah. that you needed, but the toner did lift some. Hydrogen peroxide is a lifting agent. It's going to lift some. And then you mm -hmm. have the color in the toner, the base color. That's going to cut some. But that doesn't mean we can gamble and do that you know, because like you said, it was not as light as the front or not as light as you wanted it. Yeah. It had too much underlying pigment. All right, other questions? When you do, like, you lighten it and then you put another color on top of it, does that count as one service? No, that is two chemical processes unless your toner is semi-permanent. That's the only time because the sem semi-permanent or semi-permanent do not create a chemical change. So that doesn't count as a chemical change if it's semi. But if you're using a demi or a permanent toner, yes, ma'am, that's two chemical processes. That means that won't work with a relaxer or a perm. So the girl that came in that wanted to have the gray and wanted her hair chunks like with folds, and she had wanted dark, dark brown. And she said that her hairstylist used to do go and put it all over and then fall in, but she didn't want us to do that because it was so damaging. I didn't want you to do that either and wasn't going to do that. Yeah. Why put artificial color all over hair when parts of it you know you want to be light blonde? Yeah. Because that's just making you use more chemicals yeah. and put the hair through more stress because it went through the chemical change with the dark color. Now it's got to go through a lot stronger one than it needed to to get rid of that dark artificial color plus remove the natural pigment. So the best thing to do is to foil in the lighter shades and then cover all the rest of it that's left out of the foils with a dark color. You know, I don't know why anybody would want to color it all over and then lift yeah. that because that's, you know, those that, those that you put in the foils with the lightener on it, that's one process. Yeah. Then you go in and put the dark color on all the other hair while that hair is protected by the foils. Neither one of them have been through but one chemical process, so why, so why add? Say you have a girl come in and she wanted black hair and say she was gray all over. If we took, say if we did, somebody did take it and color all over black and she wanted blonde, light blonde streaks. She's not going to get not light gonna blonde, blonde streaks in black hair that has been dyed it's artificial. Ready. It's going to be red and orange, might be blue and green, anything but blonde. The only way you could take that to blonde, and this is not a sure way if it has uh, stained it, and that's by using a color remover because a color remover dissolves artificial color pigments and natural color pigments. But that is a very strong process. You cannot buy that product over the shelf in any way, shape, form, or fashion. It takes a professional to buy it. It is so strong. So the best bet would just do full two colors. I mean, pull that color and, then, and then put the rest of it in the yes, yes. I don't ever like that dyeing the hair and then re, and then removing some of it. I don't see the point in doing two services or two chemicals on hair when one will work and one will definitely work in that instance. All right, other questions. Okay, then we're ready to color, aren't we? I've got the classroom for y'all so we can go on to our color applications when we finish this test. And I want to see what you can do. I may get our videographer back down here and let him video your work. <laughs>